English Pokemon cards or Japanese Pokemon cards? An age-old question. In today's video, I'll be doing something that no one else yet has done on YouTube. I'll be using real data to compare English booster boxes versus Japanese booster boxes to tell you which one is the best investment so far. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Pokemonster here, and in today's video, I will be comparing the growth to date of Japanese Sword and Shield booster boxes versus English booster boxes. As you can see on my screen, I've prepared an Excel spreadsheet that's going to help me measure the numbers to tell you which one has been the best investment so far. The best part of me making this video is that I actually haven't looked at the numbers yet, so I actually don't know how this video is going to turn out and who is actually going to win this battle of English versus Japanese Pokemon cards. I've taken the 12 English Sword and Shield sets and matched them up with their Japanese equivalents, as you can see. So obviously it's not going to be a perfect method, but I thought two ways in which I could do that is look at the absolute growth in numerical terms from the retail price. Now for Japanese, I've used the MSRP for Sword and Shield of 4,950 yen, except for three sets, Battle Region, Dark Phantasma, and Incandescent Arcana. I'm gonna be using 5,500 for the mark. And for English, I am not going to be using the MSRP of 143 pounds or $143. I'm going to use what I think is a realistic starting point which is $115. But on top of that, I will also be measuring the percentage growth for each booster box. And in order to win one round of battles, the booster box or set needs to win both categories. So let's say I wanted to look at the Japanese Sword and Shield booster boxes. It needs to win both in absolute growth and in percentage terms in order to get a one round win. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be tallying up the total number of wins and then we'll see who is the actual winner. Obviously, there are a few drawbacks with this model and it's very difficult when you're trying to condense a lot of data into something meaningful that's a little bit simplified. So for example, this is only giving you a snapshot of the position today. It's not going to be telling you what the future is going to look like, especially with Japanese. We don't know if more reprints are coming, but the idea is that I'll be doing this kind of update maybe once every two to three months so you can get a rolling idea of how things are going. On top of that, there are some English sets that don't have booster boxes like Celebrations, Champion's Path, Crown Zenith, and I'm missing another one in my head. And finally, there are of course regional price differences. So for example, in the US, Fusion Strike and Brilliant Stars are very expensive, but they remain available on the UK Pokemon Center. Okay guys, so we are gonna go straight into it. For Japanese booster boxes, I'm going to use Sneaker Dunk because that's where I think I can get the best data. So starting with Sword and Shield Base, in Japanese, it's separated into two half sets as it's standard. So we are gonna start with Sword Base with a very nice box art. But what I'm gonna look at on Sneaker Dunk is actually the last sold value. So for Sword Base, we have 20,000 yen. And for Shield Base, which as everyone will know, will have that base set Marnie SR, which during the waifu hype was a card that everyone was chasing. We are going to be looking at a last sold price of 45,000 yen on the 10th of June. So that's 27,000 yen for Sword Base and 45,000 yen for Shield Base. And finally, we are going to be looking at the English equivalent of this. Looking at TCG Player, the last market value was 288 US dollars, so the English side is doing pretty well. And now I'm gonna crunch the numbers, and the winner is Sword and Shield Japanese base win the first round. But if you're an English collector, don't fret because we're gonna go on to Rebel Clash now. Taking a look at the Japanese equivalent of Rebel Clash, I think Japanese is gonna win this purely because of the fact that VMAX Rising is here. Now, if you're an English collector, you might be wondering why is this box worth so much? Well, I think it's just because it was extremely rare because there wasn't that much demand for it, but also it does have that Sonya waifu chase card, which even now, I guess, is still pretty popular. So with VMAX Rising, you can see prices have come down, but the last sale was pretty recent for 37,500 yen. And then looking at the Japanese version of Rebel Clash, the base part of it, Rebellion Crash or Clash in Japanese, the last sell value for this box was 25,000 yen. Now looking at the English side of it, Rebel Clash is still worth quite a bit as well. However, the trend in the last few months has been downward. 
it is sort of one of those rare boxes in both English and Japanese because no one wanted it at the time. But Rebel Clash is going to be sitting at 214 US dollars. I'm just making notes on my notebook to prove that I'm actually doing this live with you guys together. And crunching the numbers again for Rebel Clash, we have 260 US dollars of growth for VMAX Rising from the retail price. Now 4950 yen is about 31.44 US dollars at the moment. And for Rebellion Clash, we have a 127 US dollar growth in absolute terms both being 600 plus percent and 400 plus percent so the total absolute growth for japanese is 333 us dollars total japanese percentage growth is you average out the two percentages which is 500 percent growth looking at english now the growth from the retail price that i've decided is 99 us dollars english growth percentage 86 percent so the winner again is japanese pokemon cards Darkness Ablaze on the Japanese side is made up of two sets, first being Infinity Zone, which in the original name was actually called World Down, fun easter egg, but unfortunately they had to change the name because this came out around the same time as the big virus that I'm not going to talk about. And also, if you look at Eternatus there, it does actually look a little bit like something like that. But anyways, I digress. Looking at the sold values from the retail price, the last sold was 20,000 yen for Darkness Ablaze. There isn't really anything that good in the set. I can only think of a few full arts of popular Pokemon like Houndoom, Salamence and Scizor, but nothing that cool. And looking at this Japanese set, probably one of the worst Japanese Sword and Shield sets, but still retains some value because it's an early Sword and Shield set, which wasn't printed that much. But as you can see, the price is really going down. So the last sold value for that is going to be 12,000 yen. Looking at the English side of things, Darkness Ablaze Booster Box has been crashing a little bit, but coming back up in the last three months. So going up to 145 US dollars. But I think the winner is going to be pretty obvious here again. And the winner is... So no surprises there, Japanese is smashing it out of the park again with 223.25% growth over the original retail price. And realistically, you probably could have gotten those sets for retail price in Japan. One thing to note is that when I'm using the sneaker dunk prices as well, those are prices before shipping. So it makes sense to balance it out with the retail price, which is before shipping as well. So 223% for the Japanese side. In the English side, 26.09%. So Japanese wins again. Again, it's 3 and 0 so far. Can English get a victory in the next one? Let's look at Vivid Voltage next. Alright guys, so moving straight on into Vivid Voltage. On the Japanese side, we start off with Legendary Heartbeat. As you can see from the box art, this is the base or the main set where the amazing rares came out. So the last sold for this box was 15,000 yen. It is a pretty rare box, I would say. Again, early Sword and Shield. So 15,000 yen for Legendary Heartbeat and looking at Astonishing Vault Tackle, notice the very cool Charizard there, but the set is entirely focused around that Rainbow Chonkachu and the last sold was 8,598 yen. Okay, so let's take a look. Can Vivid Voltage bring this back? It is a popular English set. So let's take a look at the Vivid Voltage price. The last market price for Vivid Voltage in English was 134 US dollars. Looking at these numbers in my chart, Legendary Heartbeat is going to carry the Japanese side this time with a 200% growth. The Japanese side of Volt Tackle is actually only 73.7%, which is probably the lowest growth we've seen so far on the Japanese side. The total growth for the two Japanese sets, 87 US dollars, average growth of 138%. When we compare that to the English side, growth of 19 US dollars plus 17.17%. 17 .17%. So again, Japanese wind round four. But the crucial point to make here is that even if I was just comparing the Japanese side of Vivid Voltage through Volt Tackle, 23.17 US dollars, 73% still beats the English side on both fronts. So Japanese wins round four. Now let's get on to battle styles, everyone's most beloved set. Okay, so looking at this very quickly, this is the alt art base set. So in Japanese, you've got S5i Ichigeki Single Strike Master, 22,999, but the last sold was actually 22,000 yen. And looking at the Rapid Strike side, which has the Empoleon alt art plus the Urshifu VMAX training under the waterfall, very iconic card. This is going to be worth probably more than the Japanese side. Actually, the last sold for this was the exact same as Single Strike. So that's interesting. But looking at the English side again, 
looking at the TCG player last market price, it's 137 US dollars. So I think it's pretty clear again who's going to be the winner in this case. Clear result again on the Japanese side 343% growth, 216 US dollars absolute growth. On the English side, unfortunately, despite all the gains that Sword and Shield has made in the first half of this year, it's only a gain of 22 US dollars and 19.89%. And even if you know, even if I was to make that starting price lower from 115 US dollars to like, you know, 105 US dollars or something like that, it's still pretty clear to me that Japanese is smashing the US side on battle styles. Let's move on to Chilling Rain now, a set that everyone has been hyping up a lot on the English side. Moving on to Chilling Rain on the Japanese side, we start off with S5A Matchless Fighter which has the Blaziken VMAX and 4 V alt arts including the 3 Galarian birds. So the last sold value that I'm going to be using for this is 20,500 yen. Then I'm going to be looking at Silverlands which is the less popular part of the Calyrex element of Chilling Rain. So the last sold for that for one box from what I can see is 7,900 yen. And then looking at Jet Black Poltergeist, a set which I think is extremely underrated because it also has the Caitlyn in it. The last sold for a single box was 9887, but let's just verify that. Yeah, so, so the last sold for a single box was 9887 here. And now let's take a look at the English side of Chilling Rain. Actually doing really, really well. So looking at the market price, it's 231 US dollars. So this is one of those sets that's recently gone out of stock on the UK Pokemon Center as well. So actually the values in the US kind of match up with the values in the UK. So looking at Chilling Rain there, it looks like Japanese has won again. 150 US dollars of growth, 157% in percentage terms, but it only just edges the English version of Chilling Rain, which grew by 116 US dollars and in percentage terms was 101%. So this is probably the closest matchup that we've got so far. And hold on to your hats because next we've got the biggest showdown of this whole video, Evolving Skies. For Evolving Skies, on the Japanese side, we have the most recognizable Japanese set ever for Sword and Shield. Now let's look at the EV Heroes selling price as of late. We should have plenty of data for this. So looking at the last sold, it's around 42,685 yen. And I'm gonna be fair with EV Heroes and I'll explain to you why in a second. But first we move on to Blue Sky Stream, which is actually a higher value than EV Heroes. So looking at the last sold prices for Blue Sky Stream, we have 45,500 yen as the last sold. So I made a video a while ago talking about which one you should invest in between these two. And I said that Blue Sky Stream might be a better bet. So I'll put the video in the video card links right now. Looking at the English version of Evolving Skies, it's obviously not 1.5K, but looking at the market price, has stalled a little bit, but it's a whopping 691 US dollars. I have to say, if you have an Evolving Skies box that you bought at retail price, well done to you because this growth is insane. Guys, I actually forgot about a Japanese one in considering Evolving Skies. We also have S7D, the Duralidon element of the set, Skyscraping Perfect. So let's take a look at the last sold values for this because it is important for the comparison. And for S70, we have 7,700 yen. EV Heroes, I did something specific here because I know that using the retail price for EV Heroes is a little bit unfair. I know from personal experience that EV Heroes on release was already about 9,000 yen. So I have taken that into account in calculating the USD growth of EV Heroes. It is still 214 US dollars. Meanwhile, for Blue Sky Stream, I have still used the retail price because I was able to get it at MSRP price when it came out because there was so much hype around EV Heroes that people didn't really pay attention to Blue Sky Stream. Blue Sky Stream has grown by 257 US dollars and finally towering perfection or skyscraping perfect only 17.47. So what does that mean in percentage terms for each? I'm just gonna put it on the screen right there. 819 for Blue Sky Stream. What an insane growth chart for that. But when you add up the total growth for the three, it's going to be 489 US dollars of absolute growth. And in percentage terms, that presents itself as 518.48%. Looking at the English side of Evolving Skies, we have absolute growth of 576 US dollars. So it's winning in the absolute growth terms. 
In percentage terms, however, that is 500.87%. So here we have a situation, first one that we've come across, where Japanese wins on the percentage growth side, but Evolving Skies wins on the absolute growth side. And because of the margin of error that you can get, when the numbers are this close, I'm going to call this a draw between English and Japanese. We are now progressing towards the latter half of the Sword and Shield era, and we are going to move on to Fusion Strike, which was the most or much maligned set when it first came out. So the only Japanese equivalent I can think of for this is S8 Fusion Arts. So we are going to start off with the Japanese side, with the last sword being 10,099 yen. And on the English side, we have Fusion Strike at 235 US dollars. Now note before that I said that this model is not perfect because in England, you can still get Fusion Strike booster boxes from the Pokemon Center at MSRP retail price of 143 pounds. So with Fusion Strike, I've got the numbers in my notebook. So the Japanese side grew by 32 US dollars which is 104%, but the English side, as you can see on my screen, grew by 124.99 US dollars. And what that means in percentage terms is 108%. So this is the first US win. Fusion Strike English wins over the Japanese side. Now let's move on to Brilliant Stars. The Brilliant Stars, we have a one-to-one -one comparison as well. I do know there is a flaw in this model in that the sets from Brilliant Stars onwards incorporated the Trainer Gallery, but we don't have that on the Japanese side. So we have S9, the first set for V-Star cards and the last sold for this box in Japanese is pretty low, 6,200 yen. And on the English side, Brilliant Stars must be doing well, although it is coming down a little bit, but the market price is still 189.21 dollars so let's crunch the numbers for this all right so brilliant stars set best known for the charizard v alt art the japanese side of starbirth not doing too well 7.94 us dollars of growth which is only a 25 percent markup against the retail price and you could argue that at the time that brilliant stars came out it was kind of retailing for around that price already Meanwhile, the English side is doing extremely well, an absolute growth of 74 US dollars, which brings it a 64.53% growth, which means that English takes a second successive win. So as you can see from Evolving Skies onwards, we've had a draw for English plus two wins. Now, can English keep up the momentum? I don't know. I'm excited to see. Let's get into it. Moving on to the next battle, Astral Radiance. We are going to start with the Japanese equivalent. Firstly, we've got Battle Region because this set contains the Misty and the Cynthia both of which are in the Astral Radiance Trainer Gallery, so I think it's fair to include it here. And as you can see, it is actually below the retail price that I've prescribed, so this is actually going to be a loss unless I can see a good sold listing in the last three months. So we have 4,400 yen for Battle Region, so really, really unpopular set. Moving on to the next elements of Astral Radiance, you guys will be more familiar with these box arts. We have Space Juggler, again, not doing very well. So as we move towards the latter end of Sword and Shield, the prices really are not doing well. We have 5,800 yen for Space Juggler, which contains the Arida and the MC Escher Palkia alt art. Finally, moving on to Time Gazer, let's check out what the last sold is. This has the Dialga alt art from Mitsuhiro Arita, and the value for that is 6,500 yen. Now, moving on to the English side, I believe this set is doing pretty good because it did sell out of the US Pokemon Center. So the value for it is 176 US dollars. All right, guys, so looking at Astral Radiance, you are going to be shocked by these numbers. Battle Region is down seven US dollars, which means a decrease of 22.26%. Time Gazer is up 9.85 dollars, which is peanuts, which is 31.33%. Space Struggler is up 5.4 US dollars, which is 17.18%. That leaves a total markup of 8.25 dollars only for these three Japanese sets, which is an 8.75% increase against the base retail price. Meanwhile, the English side Astral Radiance grew by over 61 US dollars, which gives it a growth percentage of 53.90%. Now, the first six months of this year have really turned things around, right? So this is a big W for Astral Radiance. Congratulations, English side. 
Now let's move on to the last two sets that we have, which is Lost Origin and Silver Tempest. It's time to look at Lost Origin, one of the most popular English Sword and Shield sets. So on the Japanese side, we start off with Dark Phantasma first, which is again one of those brick box style special sets. 20 packs, 6 cards per pack with a reverse hollow in it. So let's see, the last sold for this was 4,222 yen, which is a shockingly bad number, again, under retail, especially for these brick boxes, because I'm considering retail for these as 5,500. And then let's look at Lost Abyss, which is obviously being reprinted. You can check out my video link of the latest news in the description of this video. But let's look at the price trend for Lost Abyss. Since the reprint was announced, look at that. It was sitting at around 20,000 yen. And since the reprint was announced, it's absolutely tanked in price. So the last sold for that is still a respectable 10,359 yen. But I expect that to move once the reprint actually hits the market. Moving on to the English side of things, we have a very, very strong lost origin booster box kind of regret not buying it but i felt like it was inflated at the time it is going down a little bit but it's still a very huge number which is 208 us dollars so let's talk about lost origin what are you guys expecting in this so i've got my notebook in front of me dark phantasma was down 8.12 us dollars which is a huge loss of minus 25 percent very unexpected for modern japanese sealed product meanwhile lost abyss is up 33.36 US dollars still, which is up 109.29%, but I do expect that to drop. Adding the two up, it's an overall growth of 26.24 US dollars and 41.73%. Compare that to Lost Origin, it was up by a whopping 93.22 US dollars and a whopping 81.06%. So the English side of Lost Origin absolutely smashing it out the park, more than double percentage growth. And that's double percentage growth when you take into account the fact that the base price is 115 US dollars. So it's even harder to achieve that amount of growth. So kudos, English Lost Origin wins this one. So we are moving into our final round of this English versus Japanese showdown. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please do make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. But moving on to Silver Tempest, one of my favorite sets from the Sword and Shield era. I did say it was very underrated, but it has gone up in price recently. So the Japanese side, we've got Paradigm Trigger, which is pretty much around retail price now. So looking again at the reprint announcement, it has dropped last sold being 5197 yen. And then we have the second half of Silver Tempest, which is Incandescent Arcana, also subject to a reprint. So let's take a look at the price change for this one, going from around 8,000 yen to now the last sold being 5,616 yen, which is only just above retail price for that brick box type of set. Moving on to the English side of Silver Tempest, I really, really like the Lugia artwork on this. You can see that the price has been climbing. I did make a video around this time talking about how underrated I thought Silver Tempest was compared to the other Sword and Shield sets, which were going up in price. But now it has settled at a probably quite reasonable price being 167. Thank you so much for sticking around so far. I have the results. So Paradigm Trigger went up by 1.57 US dollars, which is a 4.99% increase, which you would wipe out entirely through shipping costs and incandescent arcana went up only by 0.74 us dollars because i've compared it against the higher retail price which is an increase of 2.31 percent meanwhile we have silver tempest which went up by 52.05 us dollars which is a growth increase of 45.26 percent and that is 45 percent compared against a growth of around 3.5 percent for the japanese side so on this side silver tempest takes the bag now let's finalize our results i haven't actually counted in my head how many wins japanese against us had so we have come to the end of the road and i am going to be presenting you the results of the winner of the showdown it's taken me so much time to compile all this so i'd really appreciate a like if you enjoyed this insight so starting off with sword we have a japanese win so that's one to japan rebel clash japanese darkness ablaze japanese vivid voltage Japanese, Battle Styles, Japanese, Chilling Rain, Japanese, but the gap was sort of starting to narrow down. Then we move on to Evolving Skies, which is pretty much the halfway point of Sword and Shield, and that ended in a draw. Fusion Strike, English, Brilliant Stars, English, Astral Radiance, English, 
Lost Origin English and Silver Tempest English. So what do you think the total tally of wins each side is? On the Japanese side, we have a total of six wins. We have one draw between the two at Evolving Skies, and then we have five English wins. So based on this very simplistic model, Japanese just about edges it at the moment. But my commentary is I find it super interesting that Japanese won the first six and then a draw and then English won all of the rest. And is this a reflection of reprint rumors? People are maybe scared that Pokemon in Japan is reprinting Japanese sets in reverse order. So maybe all of the more hype recent sets from Silver Tempest all the way down to Evolving Skies maybe are seeing that bit of a dip on the Japanese side. So this was a super interesting comparison. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. How can I improve this model? Do you agree that Japanese won so far? I think on the early side, it does make sense that Japanese won purely because the print quantity was lower. But as we know, that can change which is why I would really like to make an update video in about three months to see if the situation has changed. Maybe English will win and will win by a much bigger margin at that time. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. Japanese just about edges Sword and Shield, but it's very, very, very close. So Japanese just about edges it still, but that might change in three months. And guys, at this point, you might be wondering what were Japanese prices like about six months ago? And if you want to find that out, click on this video on this window right now, where I compared the top 10 most expensive Japanese boxes in November last year.